Today's message is called, This is the Moment. This is the Moment. I wrote a book with some of my team members a few years ago called Crucial Moments, and where we take moments that seem to have difficulty and we flip it and say, oh, really? That's so exciting. God always shows up when. <laughs> yeah. Like, you only got two hours sleep last night. Oh, really? That's so exciting. God always shows up when you only get two hours sleep. Your house is a mess when important people knock on the door. Oh, really? That's so exciting. God always shows up when your house is a mess and important people come over. And it's got 50 devotionals. That's such a, it's, it's, it's a fun one. And it gives practical, uh, mm, which, how should I say it? It gives practical situations for James 1, 2, when it says, consider it pure joy, my brother, when you fall into various trials. But I want to take it even a little deeper at another angle on this uh, and say, this is, this is the moment. This is the moment. In my book, Fully Convinced, The Art of Decision-Making, which I believe is one of the most, if not the most important book I've written, wrote it last couple of years, and it goes into the fact that part of being conformed to the image of Christ is not just in our behavior, but even more importantly in our thinking. And the goal is to be fully convinced, to be fully convinced who God says we are, to be fully convinced that what we're doing is important and significant and what we should be doing. And I start, it's got eight chapters, and the first chapter is called The Epidemic of Doubt, Insecurity, and Guilt. And I asked some questions in the beginning of that chapter, and I believe it's going to help you understand where I'm going. So the question number one, is my feeling of unworthiness a bigger problem than what I feel unworthy about? Or next, is my feeling of shame a bigger problem than what I feel shame about? Or number three, is my feeling of regret a bigger problem than what I feel regret about? Four, is my unresolved doubt about a decision or commitment I have made a bigger problem than the decision or commitment that I have made? And this is the moment. Now, we have strongholds. It talks about in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, it says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And by the way, the, in that most quoted spiritual warfare passage in the Bible, it's not talking about regional demonic principalities. It's talking about belief systems in our own mind. It's called strongholds. And the only command that's given is to take thoughts captive. The highest level of spiritual warfare is the decision to think higher than what you're feeling and experiencing. It says, we demolish arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The arguments and the high things, the most common arguments and high things trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God are feelings and past experience. Our feelings and past experience. Now, this is, I want to talk about the feeling piece right now. Because our strongholds, negative strongholds, let me put it that way, produce feelings in us that want us to keep agreeing with what the stronghold is trying to tell us. So we could have a, a stronghold that we're a shameful person and the feelings of shame are going to come from that belief system because what we believe is going to influence our emotions. Let me take a little detour here. You, you can look at like a verse in John 
8.32, where it says the truth will make you free. Well, first of all, if we believe truth, we're going to get free in our emotions and then in our circumstances. But if the truth makes us free, the lie restricts us. The lie limits us. So if we're believing lies, we're first going to get restricted emotionally, and then we're going to get limited and restricted in our experience. Or looking at it another way is, another verse is Romans 15, 13, where it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And I say pretty much every podcast, at the end, I say, that increasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. But what's interesting about Romans 15, 13 is that it says, now may the God of all of God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. It's talking about three emotions that come out of positive strongholds. Hope, all joy, and peace. And, and so... If we want a different emotion, we need a different belief. Emotions don't validate truth. They just validate what we believe is true. And so as we think about this, the various strongholds that we might have or mindsets, strongholds I've already mentioned a few of shame, unworthiness, regret, Doubt, double-mindedness, victim mindset, discouragement, disappointment. And so let me just, again, say this. But my feeling of disappointment is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel disappointed about. Or my feeling of being discouraged, feeling of discouragement is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel discouraged about. Or my feeling of being a victim, that feeling is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel a victim about. Now, this is really important because if we don't get this, then we, we don't understand how to actually truly do spiritual warfare. Because spiritual warfare is not just rebuking the devil. And certainly there's times where we need to go directly at the devil. And I appreciate those who've got powerful deliverance ministry. But the devil in himself is not as big as a problem as our belief systems. Because if we're believing truth, where the Bible says we're going to be free— and if we're free, it does. If we're free, the devil's not bothering us very much. <laughs> and even to put on the full armor of God in Ephesians six, we need to believe something to get the pieces on. And I mean, the one of them it says the shield of faith, Ephesians six sixteen. They take up the shield of faith, wherewith you you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the fiery darts. Take up the shield of good beliefs. And so as I'm talking about, this is the moment. This is it. I remember when I was going after discouragement and the Lord said, again, your, your feeling of discouragement is a bigger problem than what you're discouraged about. If you're just focusing on what you're discouraged about and trying just always to change that or hope that that was different rather than going after the lies that are creating this stronghold of discouragement, this feeling of discouragement, we need to go after that. And, and so I, he, he said, Steve, I want you to get excited when the feeling of discouragement comes on you and just say, this is it. This is the moment. This is it. This moment, this feeling that's coming on me and my response to this feeling is, is more important than having an encounter with God where I get slain in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Starting to feel that shame thing again, that embarrassment, feeling less than, 
Oh, yes, and, and uh, un unworthy. This is it. The feeling's coming on me. This is, this is exciting because I get to truly do spiritual warfare. I get to truly go after the belief systems that are creating this feeling, and I get to establish new strongholds. Whew, I'm feeling disappointed. Yes, this is it. This is it. Um, um, that feeling of regret. I'm thinking about that situation again and those feelings. This is it. This, I, I get to go after the lies that are trying to perpetuate a stronghold of regret in my mind. Oh, I hope you're getting this. I, I really do, because if we don't, then what's going to happen is that we're, we're going to try to wait for different set of circumstances to feel better. And I'm all for better circumstances. <laughs> I'm all for good things happening. But, but ultimately, if we do what I'm talking about right here, and by the way, I just see a grace being released upon you to live out what I'm saying. And I see the Lord giving you revelation right now about this. As we live this out, this is what makes us leaders. This is what makes us have influence. This is what helps us really be able to walk in fulfillment, joy, hope, and peace. <laughs> this is the moment. But what are you battling today? What, what, are, what are the strongholds that are, are trying to give you a feeling coming from? Which are the ones I mentioned <clears throat> do you relate to the most? And we all battle the same ones. We all, all the ones that I, I've mentioned, pessimism. Insecurity, my feeling of insecurity is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel insecure about. My, my feeling of being unappreciated is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel unappreciated about. <laughs> my feeling of offense is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel offense about. And these, these strongholds, these beliefs, these feelings, they do, I mean, they do come from believing lies. So I release over you, this, this is the moment. I'd be pastoring in church and that feeling of discouragement would come upon me in a different situation. This is it. This is the moment. This is exciting. Because I get to pull down a stronghold. I get to demolish an argument. I get to take thoughts captive. I get to use spiritual weapons, the word of God. Wow, wow, wow. I bless you today. This is the moment. Hey, one more thing I was thinking about. It, it, it relates a little bit, but not, not totally. I love when Chris Valentin, he, he taught once he's a, senior associate leader here at Bethel Church in Redding, California. And, and he was talking about, he said the same culture that created 11 world changers also, also created a Judas. I hope you enjoyed that little ring there. <laughs> Let me say that again. The same culture that created 11 world changers also created a Judas. And he said, in leadership, if our goal is to prevent a Judas, we'll probably never have 11 world changers. And I just believe this is a prophetic word for somebody out there. I was sensing this before I started this message, that as we seek to uh, try to prevent negative things from happening, Maybe it's even leaders having moral failures. Maybe it's something within our family, a, a child who's, 
who's doing something wrong or, or, or maybe it, it's even in our own life where our, our focus is trying to prevent a Judas from coming out in our own life. Uh, I, I want to just say this, that if we're just trying to avoid negative things from happening, the world changers are not going to come forth. And I just see the Lord giving you wisdom on how to apply that in, in different situations within your life. We can't just, when we experience pain or, or negative behaviors, we can't swing the pendulum way over to the other side and just say, I'm just going to try to prevent that thing from ever happening again. Certainly, we're going to use wisdom, but I believe you're going to get the point that I'm sharing. Hey, our annual Negativity Fast Positivity Feast is starting February 14th here in 2024. 40 days. It's an event that we've done for years. And it's so powerful. It's such an opportunity just to dedicate 40 days before Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday, Advent, that whole, the whole last week of Jesus' life. And this Negativity Fast Positivity Feast, it's free, IgnitingHopeAcademy.com, IgnitingHopeAcademy.com. You can sign up. If you receive our newsletter, you've already uh, received information on it. And if you sign up, you get an email every day of a lie to fast and a truth to feast on. It's coming up. And then we're going to be starting in April again, our five-month transformational mind renewal course. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is just such an important teaching that we do. Our most detailed, powerful teaching on renewing the mind, the five steps of radical mind renewal. That's going to be starting in April. You'll be able to, you'll have information about that in March. But if you're looking for something, oh, three hours a week or so, to really jumpstart your belief systems, that's going to be coming up. Hey, Steve Backlin here. We here at Igniting Hope are here to ignite your hope because there's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get true hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. Let me give you two definitions of hope. Hope is the joyful expectation that good is coming. The psalmist said in Psalm 27, I would have lost heart unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hope and vision are linked. The Bible says without a vision that people perish, we begin to die. Our motivation dies. Our energy dies once we lose hope. The other definition of hope is this. Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present. And we have the power, I have the power to help make it so. Our hope level determines our influence level, and he who is the most hope has the most influence. I believe after love, hope is the most powerful leadership, influential quality there is. It's very difficult to influence that which we do not have hope for, whether it's ourself, a family member, a nation. And remember, too, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and a merry heart is good like medicine. Our physical, emotional health, mental health is so linked to a merry heart. And the joy of the Lord truly is our strength. I used to say, well, Lord, I'll, I'll be joyful when all my uncertainties are over, when all my personal weaknesses are overcome, when everybody in my life is doing what I think they should be doing, when I'm not hearing any negative news in the media, then I'll be joyful. <laughs> Which is a pipe dream. He said, well, Steve, if you're not joyful now, the chances of you being joyful then are, are slim. Because your lack of joy is not a circumstantial issue, it's a you issue. Oh, thanks, Lord. It always comes back to me. And he said, besides, you don't need strength at the end of the battle. You need strength in the middle of the battle. You know, pretty much for everybody listening today, today is just not a good day to walk in radical joy. <laughs> Again, I've never found a time where it's convenient to walk in radical joy. But I need strength now, and so do you. And I just release over you just the joy of the Lord. I mean, there, there's two keys that I love to mention. One is the key of 
thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, We enter his gates with thanksgiving. A gate represents an entry point into something new, into something different. And thanksgiving is causes us to go through many gates, causes us to go through the gate of, of healthier relationships. Thanksgiving causes us to go through the gate of a prosperous soul, into a prosperous soul. It also got, causes us to go through the gate into the joy of the Lord. Because as we begin to focus more on what we do have than what we don't have, more on what is happening rather than what we think is not happening, our joy level is going to increase. And we also increase our joy through delighting in the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And the context of this is the delighter is delighting with unfulfilled desires, things that he or she wants to see happen that haven't happened yet, prayers that haven't been answered or haven't seen the manifestation uh, of the answer, desires. And, and, and the delighter is delighting because delighting is a representation of hope and People who don't have hope are waiting for something to happen to live. Well, hope people are, are living while they're waiting. They're delighting. And the delighter is saying, Woohoo, Lord, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in that situation. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. Why don't you just think of a situation right now where you're tempted to just be discouraged, have a spirit of heaviness? And I want you to just say right now with me, if you're able to, Woo Lord, I, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. And I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. Because when you delight in the Lord, you're focusing on what God is doing and has done and will do rather than on what's not happening or what we think we need to do. We're magnifying the Lord, not our own responsibility or the problem. Wow, bless you in that. We just do. I just as I, I just pause here for a moment. I my my heart gets filled with thanksgiving for those of you who are hungry enough just to keep listening to these podcasts or watching it on YouTube, the podcast. And I do. I just pray a blessing over you. I'm hearing a few things prophetically over you. Uh, I'm hearing it's an hour of of just really a secret place prayer where the Lord is just just drawing you into a deeper intimacy in this season. And right now there's just things are being broken off you that has hindered that from happening. I'm hearing that people who are involved in sports, that athletes, coaches, there's revival that's happening in sports, in, in the sports mountain, so to speak, or sphere of society. Also, the Lord is drawing the hearts of parents towards their children and the hearts of children towards their parents. There's generosity being released through you. There's generosity being released through you, creative generosity. And I'm hearing that your prophetic ministry is going to another level and that your words are literally creating health where you speak them. Hey, before we wrap this session up, this podcast up with you, I love to do this. Have you pray over the Igniting Hope family, Wendy and I. Five seconds. I've shared with you a little bit. Wendy's gone through some health things and she's getting some breakthrough. And I thank you so much. It means so much for you to just stand with us in that. So why don't you pray five seconds? I'm modeling this because five seconds of prayer where we attach faith is, is more powerful than praying long prayers where we don't attach faith. And we have a lot of needs that are coming at us right now. And 
we are like the centurion who said, just to speak a word, Jesus. And, and Jesus modeled something. He spoke a word. The centurion servant was healed. And we don't need a long prayer. God's using your short prayers for powerful things. So why don't you just pray for Igniting Hope or maybe our Negativity Fast, Positivity Feast, Wendy Me, our staff, or whatever else comes to your heart. Just five seconds. Why don't you pray right now? Amen, amen. And if you're able to, why don't you just pray out loud. Just thank the Lord right now. Just thank him for what's happening in the specific area that you prayed about. We'd love for you to check our website out, ignitinghope.com, sign up for our newsletter. And if you like these podcasts, why don't you tell somebody else about them? Thank you so much. Can't wait to be with you on another teaching podcast from Igniting Hope Ministries. God bless you.